Welcome to Power Gold 12 Music Scheduling. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to get from the music library, which is this, to a final daily schedule that can be printed to paper or sent to your automation systems. Let's get started. It all begins by adding songs to your music library. Now, these can be done manually, or if you have a spreadsheet or a text file, we can show you to import that information into Power Gold or send us the file. We'll do it for you, even if you're just evaluating Power Gold. By double clicking on a song, that brings up the song editor where I can see title, artist display text. What's very important is artist separation list, as we refer to it, is what Power Gold uses during the scheduling process for artist separation, not what is in the artist display text, but the contents of the artist separation list. Now the reason for this is, if this were a song by the Beatles, the Beatles would be listed in the artist separation list, along with John Lennon's solo song, solo song by uh, George Harrison, etc., even though the artist would say Beatles. Of course, this is a solo song with a solo artist example. Once uh, your songs are entered into Power Gold, to make uh, category changes, it's as easy as dragging and dropping. When you do so, Power Gold asks if you want to move, move exclusive, or copy the song to its target folder. Move and move exclusive do essentially the same thing with the difference move exclusive means. See, since Power Gold allows songs to exist in more than one folder, the Move Exclusive option tells Power Gold to take the source song, rather, out of any category that it might be copied into and move it exclusively to the target folder. This also works with multi-selecting, just a typical Windows function of pressing Control and then individually clicking songs allows you to do a drag-drop all at once. Highlighting multiple songs also allows for mass changes. As you'll notice, the row of icons across the top perform different functions. As you roll your mouse pointer over each icon, will tell you what function is performed. You can also sort by any item simply by clicking on it. So title, if I click by title, sort by runtime, whatever field you display, you can sort by it. To get the songs back in the order they were in before you did any sorting, you click the Schedule Order button. Now it's important to understand the layout of categories. You have your categories, and underneath each category you have a folder. And that's by default. There's at least one folder within each category. However, you can create more folders under a single category if you wish. By noticing the gold folder has a total of 657 songs that are broken up into 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, respectively. And clicking on each folder will show you the number of songs that are in that particular folder. Now, since you can have as many categories as you want and as many folders within those categories as you want, that allows you to categorize non-music items like sweepers or jingles, whatever you wish. If we go back quickly and uh, double click on the song I was on, the other fields that you can see are properties. Now properties are user-defined attributes that you can assign to songs that help describe what a song is. Uh, in this case, this is a gender male, it's a sound code top 40, and it's a tempo medium. If I click Edit Property Assignments, I can see a list of all of the properties that have been created so far, and on the right, the properties that have been assigned to this particular song. And you can actually customize the screen itself. We're in the main tab of Song Information, but uh, just know that you can customize each tab to show you only information you want. And speaking of tabs, a secondary tab, by default, you can see the different fields of information that this song has. You can see a history of representation of where this particular song has played over the last couple of weeks. You can also add and attach notes to songs. You can create research. Future moves allow you 
to take a song that is in one category and move it to another category or folder at a specified date. Now, custom fields are just that. If uh, there's ever been a time when you wanted a field for whatever, just create a custom field for that. And that's very easy by clicking Tools and opening the Custom Field Editor. Additional videos will go more deeply into that. As I was speaking about multi-selecting songs and mass changing. A mass changer is very powerful because it allows you to make the same change to multiple songs that you've selected. So for example, if the songs that I have selected here were all slow songs, then I could mass change properties. I could find tempo slow, double click on it, it would bounce it over to the right, and if I click OK, it would assign slow to the songs that I multi-selected. There are different separation reports, spin reports, that you can quickly do on the fly in the music library that we'll cover in another video. And the reason I keep mentioning we're going to cover in another video, cover in another video about music library items is because I really want to jump to the heart of Power Gold where you set up restrictions and control your clocks and set up properties and that's in the format control area which is really the primary focus of this particular video. By going into format control the tabs are set up almost in the order that you want them to be uh, if you were building a radio station. First creating categories, uh, clocks, signing properties and so forth. We'll discuss categories first. And I'm going to click the little blue down arrow button to expand the categories out because remember categories have folders. The A current category, if I highlight it, it's so user friendly, very intuitive. By clicking on this category on the very right, I can see the rules, the separation rules that have been set up for this particular category. I have artist primary separation, artist secondary separation, and song separation. Now if I wanted to add more rules to this category I simply click the plus button and up comes a list of various separation rules and offset rules. Now many rules will not apply to certain categories and some rules will of course. If you use mood for example I could add mood to this category. I could also do the multi-select trick and multi-select several rules and by clicking OK it would add them to this category. I'm not going to do that for the moment but I do want to examine the rules that are set up for this category. Artist primary separation is set at one hour. If I double click on that that brings up the separation settings and indeed you can see the separation is set at one hour. The priority of this rule is set to high. The priority is what is used to tell PowerGold how important the rule is. From low to high to in between to unbreakable, uh, you can set the, uh, the importance of the rule to whatever you like. Uh, unless you set the rule to be unbreakable, you can use a core value. Now the core value is also a type of separation, but it's the amount of time you want this rule, in this case the artist separation rule, to remain unbreakable. So that makes the rule flexible and unbreakable at the same time. So if I put 30 minutes in this section, then that means that I want one hour of primary artist separation. It's a high priority rule, which actually that doesn't matter. I could make it a low priority rule uh, insofar as core uh, is concerned, but the 30 minutes means that this rule, artist primary separation, is to remain unbreakable for 30 minutes. That's the unbreakable part, of course. The flexible part is the 30 minutes in between, where a uh, very intelligent scaling component will kick in and decide whether or not uh, the song is the best to schedule for any particular position. But it's important to note that core 
is disconnected from priority, has nothing to do with priority whatsoever. The priority uh, has to do with the amount of separation you have set, whether it's low priority or high priority, and then core is separate. It's just unbreakable, period. And that's really how easy it is to set up rules on your categories in Power Gold. Very simple, very easy. Uh, song separation rule, double click on that. I have uh, 40 minutes of uh, song separation set at medium high. I have no core value on it in this particular case. But if I want to find out, well, what other categories have song separation? And what are their values? And what uh, priority are they set at? Do I have to click on each category to find that out? Well, the answer is no, you don't. The various icons uh, just above the rules will show you what each icon does. Of course, we showed you adding a rule. You can also remove a rule, edit a, a rule. But I love this one right here. This is a browse song separation and click the browse selected rule. And this is going to, to browse this rule, the song separation, across all of my categories. So uh, my B currents, my 2000s category, you can see what values I have set on song separation uh, and the priority in which that rule has been set. You can stay on the rule browser and click the drop down box, choose a different rule. Let's find uh, the artist primary separation. You can see I have one hour on each of my categories. And you can also do the multi select trick, multi select uh, different categories, or I could highlight all categories and make a change to the rule that would apply across all categories. In this case, I've highlighted all of the rules that have a high priority. But let's say I want to make it a different priority. So I'm going to edit the rules that I've selected. And I can change the priority to medium high instead of high. I'll keep the one hour value in there. Change the uh, priority to medium high. Click OK. And now, without having to go into each category individually, I have changed the priority of the artist's primary separation rule to medium high instead of high. But since I really don't want to do that, I'm going to change it back to high priority. As in my case, artist primary separation is a very important rule. But the point is, is you can click the drop down box, pull up any rule, see how it's set across each category, and also even change the value as well. Now, just as there are uh, category rules that can be set up, you can also set up folder rules. Different rules apply to different folders. Now, probably the best way to demonstrate that is to show you the gold category because it's the one that has the multiple folders. Now, the gold category, of course, has uh, a, a few more rules than the uh, A power current which only has a handful of songs in it. But the gold category it has the same amount of separation, but there's a couple of more rules added in. A time period, separation, uh, previous day it played, uh, and so forth. But there are also folder controlled rules. So by clicking on folders under the gold category, I can see my different folder names, which essentially are the decades. And in this case, when I tell Power Gold that I want a gold category to play, it takes turns by pulling songs from the folders based on the folder exposure or the percent of the time I want Power Gold to schedule a song from each particular folder. In this case, I have four folders. If I click on each individual folder, there are rules or settings that can be put onto each individual folder. In this case, uh, different items are controlled, such as search depth. Now, search depth is the number of songs that Power Gold can look at from the front of the folder to choose a song that hopefully does not break a rule. In this case, uh, this folder has 86 songs. So during the scheduling process, when Power Gold schedules a song from the 1960s folder, 
it could look at 30% of those 86 songs from the top, the most rested. It chooses the song that has the least severity of rules against it. But I've just shown you how easy it is to set up category rules for each of your categories. Now, the value that you put on each rule and the actual rules you use is going to depend on the number of songs you have in your categories and the number of times you call for the folders of that category to get played on your clock. Clocks, as indicated, are simply templates for broadcast hours. I mean, they contain the general content of an hour in your daily broadcast schedule. They can contain any number and combination of music events, non-music events, or categories, folders. In many cases, a clock name will give away when that clock is used. In this case, the AM drive clock is a clock that we, I will use in morning drive. In highlighting it, I can see on the right the layout of this clock. There are two different kinds of clocks. This is a fixed position clock, meaning in the hours that the AM drive clock is used, the items are going to get laid out or they're going to schedule in the order you see here vertically. There's going to be a legal ID, we have some news in the morning, then um, a song from the gold category is going to play. Um, next is an A power current, uh, folder one, and so forth. It's a fixed position clock. The other type of clock is a natural flow clock. Now these are really nice. They allow you to call for the number of folders from each category that you want, like two A's per hour. Uh, three gold categories per hour, two recurrents in this case per hour, and they're almost floating. In other words, Power Gold is going to determine the order in which the categories get scheduled. So you'll have the same clock, but you'll have a slightly different arrangement of the folders each hour, and you can control it even beyond that. Not only will one clock take the place of several different clocks by using a natural flow. You can also control the natural flow by using what are called flow groups. Now PowerGold doesn't simply just randomize the order in which these folders are scheduled. If it did, you could have cases where you had all of your older categories in the first half hour and your newer categories in the bottom of the hour. A flow group is a number you can assign to any position. And the same number you assign to any position allows those positions to be interchangeable with the others. As you can notice, I have a folder group one on a gold category, a recurrent folder one, and I have folder group two chosen on an A folder one, it B secondary folder one, what that means is that during the scheduling process, the natural flow clock will take the flow numbers and know that any folder that has the same flow group number are interchangeable. In the example of flow group 2, where the A power current and the B secondary current are apart, during the scheduling process, oh, and the C new song category also has flow group 2, that means that during the scheduling process, each of these categories can swap positions as long as they have the same flow number. So you don't always have the B secondary current in the same position, and you don't have it too close to itself or another current type category. It's a way to get a different organization, a different order, in which your folders are scheduled but still maintain your scheduling goals. A gold category is allowed to swap with a recurrent. So some hours the hour will begin with a recurrent, sometimes a gold, a natural flow. This one clock will take the place of many fixed position clocks that are normally created to get that category variety in the owl. But another very important function and literally a new 
feature of PowerGold 12 are clock layers. Clock layers start with base elements. Now the base elements are the items that you see vertically going up and down the order in which items will be scheduled. But what clock layers will do, or layering we'll call it, is it allows you to change the items that get scheduled in between the base elements or in place of the base elements. For example, in this clock, it's called main, you see the base elements in the order they are set to schedule. But there is a clock layer attached to it. In this case, I have one called zero stop, which I will choose, and it's going to show you what is going to happen in this particular clock. And it's best to look at these kinds of clocks in the linear view instead of the pie chart for the moment. So you can get a, an idea of the items as they are going to occur in this exact order. So if you look at the base elements of this clock called main, we see we have a legal ID and that's fine. That is also reflected in the linear preview. Then the gold category is called for. Then the A current folder 1 is called for. But if you'll notice there's a layer under the zero stop section. And if you look further down at the bottom under the details of what is part of the zero stop layer is a break note called commercial free sweep. Now of course I purposely named the clock layer zero sweep because this I wanted to make a commercial free out. I've added a commercial free sweeper onto this layer, which I would not want to play in hours where I have commercials. The other item in this layer is after a 2000 category folder 1 is played, I've told it to also schedule a gold category after that. And of course the reason why, if there are no commercial breaks in the hour, I need more songs. Uh, further down in the layering you can see the best music sweeper break note has a red X by it. The red X means that this position is going to be replaced with, in this case, another break note or a different break note called commercial free sweeper, which makes sense because the layer, clock layer, represents a non-commercial clock as confirmed by the linear layout. As you follow along, what's nice about this is whatever position you click on to the right, you can also see the highlighted area of where you are. So if you ever lose track of where you might be uh, by actually looking at the base elements, the layered items, you can look in the linear preview and see exactly what's going to happen on that clock. Uh, the final thing on the recurrent, I also have a commercial free sweeper following the recurrence and underneath the linear layout. Clock layering is a brand new concept in clocks that you can dream up any kind of scheduling order of items that you want. Additions to items on the clock or in place of items in the clock called base elements, which are the items you see going up and down. The other example of a clock layer I've created was a clock with one stop set. Even though it's the same clock called main, the base elements are the same. What's different is the layer, and that's what makes it unique. The layer makes the base element clock different. And in this case, since I have one stop set, nothing is different until near the end of the clock, I have a 47 after stop set indicated. And that's the difference. So in any hour, I call for the main clock with the one stop layer, I will get that one stop set. The last layer example, which you can create as many as you like, is I have a sold out layer. In this case, I have commercial breaks all hour long in different positions. So you can see, and again, uh, be sure you click on the linear preview so you can see exactly the items in the order that they're going to occur. So with my sold out layer, what I've done is replace certain positions 
with stop sets, or in this case, in addition to the bass element, the 2000 folder one category, after a song from that folder plays, there will be a stop set at 8 after the hour. Uh, further down, after the B secondary folder plays, there is a 20 stop set, and so forth. You can see as you look down the items that have base elements on them, here's an item that I want to replace with a 35 stop set. In other words, I'm getting rid of the sweeper and instead playing a 35 stop set. Uh, and finally, the after the D stay current from folder 1, I have a 47 stop set. So clock layering allows you to have one clock and use it for multi-purposes. Now, if I look at the clock grid, the clock grid is where you tell PowerGoal which clock to use during the scheduling process in each day and each hour. So if I click on 6 a.m. Monday, I'm using the a.m. drive clock. No layer is applied. At 10 a.m. Monday, I'm using the clock called main. And again, there's no layer applied. It's just using the base elements vertically, going up and down, to schedule the items in that order. However, on Saturday, I'm using a main clock with a layer called one stop. I can edit the currently selected clock on the grid, which is main one stop, by clicking this button, and it brings up the elements that are in my one stop layer. And I can see that, if you recall, the one stop means I have one stop set in the clock, as indicated by the linear layout that you can see on the right hand side. Back on the clock grid itself, if you'll notice, you can assign a clock and separately a layer to that clock. So I can use the main clock and its base elements as is or I can assign a layer to any selected cell on the clock grid itself. A very powerful, powerful function to have one clock and any different number of layering that you want to apply to that same clock without having to maintain and keep numbers of different clocks. In this case, one clock can be used for many, many different purposes. Another new powerful function that have been added to clocks is special programming tags. Now, special programming tags, it seems very, very simple, and it is, but it's very powerful as well. On the main clock, you'll see a column. It has uh, geo, uh, geo slash XM. The purpose of that is when I generate a schedule, I have an option to use special programming tags. And what happens when I do that during the creation of a schedule? PowerGoal will stop and ask if I have special programming tags to execute. Let's jump to a schedule to show you how this works. Okay, if I were to create a new schedule, if there's a check mark on prompt for special programming, if I click OK to schedule the next day, a box will come up and allow me to load previously saved special programming tags. In this case, I want uh, a special programming tag called lunch hour only. Now what lunch hour only is, you'll notice the special programming tags at GO and SW. Now what I've done is I want PowerGold to replace any special programming tag listed on the clock that has a GO on it. I want it to replace that position on the clock with a song from the gold category. Additionally, I want it to replace the SW tag with a clock note called All Gold Lunch Hour. So if I click OK, Power Gold will schedule. And let's go down to 12 noon. You'll notice the special programming tags did its job. Everywhere I had a GO, I replaced the original base element with a gold category. And further down, you can see the SW 
replace the break note that was in place with a break note called All Gold Lunch Hour. Now to quickly review that, remember I have the main clock and my special programming tags. Next to my gold category, I had no programming tag, it was already going to schedule a gold. But next to each other music position, I had GO. And on the liner, I had SW. So during the scheduling process, I told Power Gold, in the, just in the 12 noon hour, to replace any GO special programming tag, to replace any base element category with the special programming tag that was defined in the special programming tag area. I'm always amazed at the different configurations that I see whenever new features are introduced and can't wait to see what some of you come up with in the way that you use special programming tags because there are so many different uses for programming special programming tags and for clock layering. However, there's nothing wrong with just having a simple clock fixed position that has the items in the order that you want them to occur without using layering or special programming. You can just simply populate your clock by dragging and dropping items onto it or removing items. You can create as many clocks as you want and use them for whatever purpose you like. And clocks can contain category or folder items clock notes, which is its own clock database, which if I double click on a clock note that opens up the database in which you can add as many clock notes as you want and drag drop them onto the clock as needed. Many broadcasters who use automation will set up automation commands. Now, commands uses the automation system's language to place into PowerGold's automation command section to ultimately be drag dropped onto the clock and exported to that particular automation system. You can have PowerGold import traffic. Whatever traffic system you use, PowerGold can import the traffic file into the PowerGold schedule so you can look at one schedule of everything. Music, traffic, everything that will be ultimately going to your automation system. You can control that from one area, Power Gold. There are other areas of the clock that we'll speak about in another tutorial. The next tab over in Format Control is Properties. And Properties, again, are user-defined attributes that can be applied to one or more songs in your library that help define what a song is. You can create as many property names as you want there's only three in this sample database, and then assign property values underneath the property names. In this case, gender, we have uh, female and male. You can also set up rules for your properties to follow. Under sound code, which there are quite a few, you can see uh, the different kinds of sound codes. You can set up a maximum in a row, uh, which is a rule that tells Power Gold, well, well let's just see for example, uh, there's a property value under sound code called classic. If I double click on that, I can see the maximum in a row is one, and that's a medium priority rule. So no more than one classic in a row. Now I have the option of using what's called an unbreakable limit. Now what that does is that tells Power Gold that if I place a check mark here, if more than one classic plays in a row. That breaks the medium priority rule. But if it has a unbreakable limit set at two, that means if it were to try to play three in a row during the scheduling process, that's unbreakable. It's almost like it's like a core value on the separation we spoke of earlier. Not only can you set up maximum in a row or maximum per hour, on any property. You can also set up separation. And in this case on the sound codes, I have a separation of sound code disco into sound code disco. And if I double click on the value here, I see that the amount of separation between sound code disco 
is 4 hours 15 minutes, and it's a medium high priority rule. Now it has a core value of 2 hours, which means two songs with a sound code disco property assigned to it is not allowed to play within two hours. It's unbreakable for two hours. And then the intelligent scaling component kicks in for the rest of the amount of time uh, to make this a medium high priority song. But for two hours there is no way a disco will schedule into another disco song. There are many things you can do with properties. You can set up restrictions to separate any property from any other property that you create, and we can go more in depth on that later. You can also look in the separation of this disco item of 4 hours 15 minutes. We can look at the list view of that, where it actually tells you what this rule is going to do. In this case, sound code disco is going to separate from sound code disco by 4 hours 15 minutes, and the slash 2 hours is the core, or the unbreakable portion. Now, uh, moving on in format control, the next tab, keywords. Keywords are user-defined names used to group music and non-music events together for special separation purposes. Now, if you notice, this keyword called disco has 15 songs referred to as keyword members. You can assign more songs from any category to this keyword a couple of different ways. If you know the song you want to assign, you just click the blue plus button and add a song to this particular keyword. But the fastest way is to simply go to the music library and use the multi-select trick I showed you earlier. Multi-select as many songs as you want and click the keyword icon above the music library and just click add a keyword to the selected song. And when you do that a list of keywords come up and you choose which keyword you want to assign the songs to. Again, that's the fastest way to assign keywords. Keyword separation overrides the song separation rule that you have set at the category level. Now, a keyword member must be from a category that actively uses the song separation rule. Otherwise, the keyword member would have no song separation rule to override. In other words, to override a song separation rule, it must first exist. So you can check your categories to see and make sure you have the song separation rule set on each category. You can click and browse the song separation rule and see which categories has song separation activated. And it appears that all of them do in this case. Keyword separation settings provide two methods of separation. One is the from self, and is the amount of time each keyword member must separate from itself, song A from song A, on a schedule, for example. From keyword members is the amount of time each member must separate from other members in the keyword, like song A from song B on a schedule. Now, keyword separation can be adjusted to provide more separation or less separation, depending on the need. Also, depending on the scheduling need, a keyword member can be made an exclusive member of that keyword. Now, only one keyword member can be chosen as an exclusive member. The exclusive member will be separated from all members, and all members will be separated from the exclusive member. But other members will not be separated from each other. In this example, I'm making Jingle 1 a keyword exclusive member, essentially providing a time barrier preventing other keyword members from scheduling too close for a specified amount of time. The goal in this particular example is to control the jingle, making sure it doesn't schedule too close to love songs too often. There are many other creative reasons for preventing a 
single music or non-music event from scheduling too close to a user-defined group of songs too often. By using the exclusive member function in keywords, you'll find many examples. Feel free to create as many keyword names and add as many keyword members as you like for special song separation or separation of special separation of any kind. Keywords is the way to go. Artist separation override is a rule that will override the regular artist primary separation rule that you have set on your categories. Similar to keyword separation overriding the song separation rule. There's always going to be that handful of artists that you want a greater amount or a lesser amount of artist separation than is set at the category level. So you do that here. Just simply click the blue plus button, find the artist you like, uh, you'd like to add to the artist separation override, double click that artist, and set the amount of separation that is higher than the regular amount of separation or lower than that amount. Also from Artist Separation Override, you can add flex notes, which we'll talk about in another video. The Advanced tab is simply a, a collection of other settings that you can get to quickly. Day Parts is just that. You can add as many day parts as you like and set the restriction that you want the day part to have. Here's an afternoon only day part. The red uh, circles mean the song that is assigned this day part is not allowed to play uh, except in the hours that are green. You can create as many day parts as you want and assign them to as many songs as you like. History Links answers the question of how do I play a different version of a song but have it only count one time. In other words, I have a remix of a popular song I want to play, but when it plays, I don't want it to have a separate history. I want it to be as if the main song played. Well, History Links is the way to go, and it's very easy to set up in Power Gold. You're seeing an end result of two examples that I've set up. An artist train. I have two titles by that artist. Meet Virginia and Meet Virginia Remix. These titles are in the music library. The train is in the gold 90s folder. We can see uh, I've packeted them together, which means I want them to take turns getting scheduled each time they make it to the front of the folder. But here's the difference. When the title Meet Virginia is scheduled, the remix version, I want it to count as historically as a play for the regular song title Meet Virginia. So that when I do a spin report or a royalty report for licensing reasons, I can count the title with a correct number of plays, even though a remix version might have been played. And this can be set up for as many songs that have differing versions. They can all be set up to be counted as the play for what they call the master song. If we go back to the history linking, you'll see that in this case I have told Powergold to make the Meet Virginia, which is underlined, to make it the master version in which to count as a play, even when the Meet Virginia remix is played. And that's history linking. And as you have more and different versions of the same songs come up, the screen will be filled with information. Finally, it's important to note that the history link title does not have to match the name of the song. You can actually call the history link whatever you want. I mean, generally you want the artist or title to be part of the name so you don't forget what two or more songs you are adding to create the history link and which one may or may not count as the master history link. The other items listed we'll cover in another video. 
The main thing is, is once you have your music library and songs or non-music items categorized the way you want, you've gone to Format Control, set up Category Rules and Folder Rules, created clocks, including using the special programming tags or the clock layering technology, and then gone to the clock grid and assigned the clock an optional layer to the clock, then you're ready to generate a schedule. If you have an idea of what you would like to see covered in a Power Gold tutorial, let us know. Thanks for watching.